At this point, I'd like to do a demonstration of uh, one such uh, set of tools using uh, a tool from programming research called QA Verify, which is a one of these uh, continuous collaboration platforms. So what I've done is I've loaded up um, a set of analysis from uh, an open source project into QA Verify. The analysis was done using another programming research tool called QAC, which is a static analysis tool that will actually that can actually be configured to enforce uh, a rigorous coding standard standard such as MISRA or um, any other uh, in-house coding standard uh, that uh, may be implemented within any specific organization. So over on the left-hand side of the screen, we can actually see the types of defects that are being detected uh, by the categorization of these defects. So you have um, uh, things around arrays and structures, bracing and indentation, uh, data flow types of errors that would reflect those, those runtime types of defects that you may not be able to detect uh, without uh, modeling the execution of the code. Um, so for example, uh, if we wanted to um, have an example of uh, safe language usage as, as part of our criteria, um, I can come down into here and take a look at um, these pointers and I see a defect telling me that the, or I should say a message telling me that we have a pointer cast to a stricter alignment. So obviously it's uh, not good practice to uh, mix pointer um, assignments between uh, incompatible types. So uh, your, your um, inspection tool is telling you that this is being done, whether it was done uh, explicitly uh, known or inadvertently, uh, this is flagging the fact that this is occurring here. Uh, things like best practices, um, you might want to take a look at something like your if-else-if constructs um, without having the concluding else statement to actually complete the logic within that particular control flow construct. So again, it's best practice uh, when developing software to go ahead and complete the logic of the control flow using that final else statement. So again, the static analysis tool is showing you that type of defect. We have the ability to uh, detect um, data flow types of errors as well. Uh, for example, here you can see that we have a negative value uh, being used in an array subscript, which is obviously a dangerous thing to do if it's not being properly guarded. So we have that ability. We have that automatic inspection widely available through the web browser. And what you're actually looking at is what we call the annotated source code, which is the output of uh, the QAC static analysis tool. So it looks very much like the output of a manual code inspection where the experts are going through the code line by line and writing on the printouts of the source code and uh, pointing out the defects that they find. This looks very similar to that. So this is what we're able to see. Now how do we automate, um, so that's how you actually automate the, the actual inspection process. It's done by the static analysis tool and we can go and view it uh, in, this, uh, in, the, in the web browser. But how do we act upon these types of um, uh, defects that are pointed out in the code? Well, the way we can do that is we can actually start a discussion around a particular defect or actually around any particular piece of code. It doesn't have to be uh, a message uh, tied to uh, this discussion that's go that I'm going to show you in a minute. And we call those uh, annotations. So what we do is we create an annotation uh, for that particular defect. And I'll just give it a, a title here of negative array index. And is this necessary? 
please review. And I have the ability, uh, depending on uh, my privileges, you can see I'm logged in over here as the manager. Um, I'm going to actually assign that state for review, and I'm going to assign it to the project lead for this particular project, and then I submit it. So now I have a discussion thread centered around a particular uh, defect that's been detected by the tools. Um, and I've actually gone and assigned it for review by one of my expert developers. So I don't have to conduct these lengthy inspection meetings uh, to figure out that we have these defects and how to uh, process um, all the defects that were found after the meeting. It's done for you inside of this tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how these users get notified through the system. I'm going to log out uh, as the manager and log in as the project lead. And up on the top right hand side, I have a list of notifications or pending actions that have been assigned to the project lead. And you can see if I click on this particular action uh, assignment, that's the exact issue that was assigned to me by the manager. Um, and I see the exact comments that he made and I have a link directly to that spot in the code where the, where the uh, annotation was placed. So I'm actually right here in the code. I'll open up that annotation. Now as the project lead, I can go and hide all the comments in the code or the messages in the code. And I can go and take a look at the code. Uh, surrounding this particular uh, defect and try and determine whether or not this is necessary or if this is uh, really a, a problem that could actually cause us trouble down the road and figure out whether we want to have this fixed or not. So in order to do that, I can simply reply uh, to the annotation. Um, and if I was going to fix this, I can say we'll fix in next revision or something similar. Um, I can change the state to close because I'm going to go act on it myself um, and submit the action. And now I have the fully um, traceable um, process of going through and acting upon the defects that have been detected by the inspection. In the case where we actually want to deviate from the standard, I can actually go and do that by creating what's called a diagnostic suppression. So I will start doing one of these diagnostic suppressions. And to create a deviation uh, to your coding standard, you have the ability to tag a suppression with a deviation. So maybe I want to say this is just a necessary construct in this particular instance. So I'll tag it as a necessary violation. You can create new deviation categories uh, uh, on the fly as you're uh, working through uh, your defects. And you also have the ability to carry forward the suppression of this diagnostic message so that now we know that this construct is here. We don't want to keep seeing this same message uh, over and over and over as we keep committing new code into source control. So I can carry this forward into subsequent snapshots, and as long as the code does not change, I do not, I will not uh, see this diagnostic message anymore. So what I'll do is I'll add this to my suppression queue, and you can see here that it goes into a list of waiting suppressions, and right now this is the only one. But if I go and suppress this particular message, I can reload the code, and that diagnostic message is no longer present um, in the marked up view of the code. So we do have that fully uh, automatable process of performing the inspection, acting upon the defects that are detected in the source code, and this allows us to do this all online without ever having to call a meeting and giving the senior level developers the opportunity to continue to develop their source code 
without uh, and only needing to interact here uh, with the system when they have an action item assigned to them from the system. Now, another piece of the collaboration platform that's very valuable is the ability to track uh, and measure software metrics. For example, um, uh, you have the ability to, to model or to track uh, quality metrics that are gathered by uh, QAC, the static analysis tool, and track them over the lifetime of this particular project. So you can see that I've uh, started out um, on the lower end of the graph here, and the cyclomatic complexity uh, jumps uh, in this particular uh, version from 0.06 to 0.07. So we can see that the, the complexity is trending upwards uh, a little bit here. And perhaps uh, being a, uh, a project manager or a quality assurance team, I might take a look at this and say that this level of complexity is unacceptable uh, in our organization. And I can notify uh, the appropriate uh, the people within the development team that they need to reinvestigate the, implementa the implementation of that particular piece of the code. So you get that ability to have your um, stakeholders in the project outside of the development environment giving feedback into the process. Another uh, critical portion of this is the reporting ability of QA Verify. So uh, as uh, an additional example to what I had done earlier by creating that deviation, I can create what's called a suppression deviation list. And I can actually give this report, I'm sorry, give this report a title. And I will generate the report against all of my snapshots. You can think of a snapshot as a specific revision uh, of the source code, possibly from version control. And when I go ahead and generate this report, I get a listing of all of those deviations that I created through the system. So now they're trackable and reportable uh, back to the appropriate parties. 